evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School. We are in the Athletic Center for tonight's boys hoops matchup between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Westwood Wolverines. Tom Nappy and Steve Spector on the call for what should be a great matchup between two very good TVL teams. And right now we're going to sit down at courtside for the introductions. Good evening and welcome to Hopkinton High School for tonight's varsity boys basketball game as the Wolverines of Westwood take on your hometown Hopkinton Hillers. The Tri-Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at HHS. And now for tonight's lineups. For Westwood, starting at guard, number 14, sophomore James McGowan. Starting at forward, number 12, junior, Jonathan Ng. Starting at forward, number 10, junior, Favor Waraboku. Starting at guard, number 4, junior captain, Jack Turgeon. And starting at guard, number 3, junior captain, Pat Riley. Westwood is coached by Steve St. Martin. And now for your hometown, Hopkinton Hillers. Starting at guard, number three, a junior, Stephen Mafiori. Starting at guard, number 10, a junior, Tommy Ambersoni. Starting at guard, number 21, a senior captain, Michael Puvacad. Starting at forward, number four, a senior, Mac Lind. Starting at forward, number 24, senior captain, Brendan Kelly. The Hillers are coached, coached by Tom Keene and assisted by Chris Banks. Now, would you all please rise for the playing of our national anthem by the HHS Hoop Band. by the Hopkinton High School Band. We're just about ready for tip-off of this boys hoops matchup between the 13-2 Westwood Wolverines and the 9-4 Hopkinton Hillers. Tom Nappy alongside Steve Spector on the call for tonight's action. The Hillers are just one win away from clinching a playoff spot. The Hillers and Westwood both enter tonight's game on a winning streak. Westwood has won two straight while the Hillers are on a four game winning streak. Westwood last played Tuesday and hung on to beat Medfield 49 to 47. Mikey Noon put up 11 points for the Wolverines. The Hillers took care of business against Ashland this past Tuesday. Steven Maffiori racked up 12 points. Tommy Ambersoni contributed 11 in the 65 to 45 victory over Ashland. Steve, it should be a great matchup between two very good teams tonight. Well, it's a huge matchup. Uh and uh, Tom, we're, we're psyched to, you know, the, the student section's loaded already. Uh, lots of parents in the stands here Friday night in the Athletic Center. Always a big, big deal here. And uh, this is like a pre-playoff pre uh, game here. To get these got both teams kind of prepared. And uh, we're off and running. Cal Lind wins the opening tip against Jonathan Ng. And the Hillers start off with possession as Lind kicks it out over to Mafiori up for three. Off the rim it goes, loose ball underneath. Lind trying to cover it up, and he will. 
And also getting in there was Jack Terzian for the jump ball call. Well, this is a great test for the Hillers, especially uh, towards the end of the season, nearing playoff time. These are the kinds of games you want at this point, I'd say, Steve. No question about it. And, and uh, again, the uh, Westwood's going to be, oh, nice play by Macklin. <laughs> Diving, almost like a soccer goalie move there. To Brennan Kelly comes away with it. Wow. The pass, great feed from Puvacad to Kelly. And the Hillers strike first. Well, they get the student section on the opposite side, right, right on cue for, for Brendan to get the hoop right in front of them. McGowan fires it across court to Terzian. Terzian inside oh, nice. to Wari Boko, and now underneath to Ng. Ng off the glass and in. Lots the scoring early. I think there's going to be scoring all night long as Westwood continues on the press. Lind with the pass over to Mafiori, and that ball knocked out of bounds off a Wolverine. The Hillers will have the entry. Yeah, critical game for both teams. You know, Hiller's on a, on a roll. Uh, four wins in, in the uh, last four games. They're kind of in the middle of a, like a home, 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 uh, lots of home games. Four, five, six hundred, you know, a stretch that it, as compared to the beginning of the season, they had a bunch of away games. So they're settling into the season nicely. There's a three no good from Lind. Westwood has it. Therefore, the rebound was Ori Boko. Terzian with the ball for the Wolverines. Feeds Ng up for three. No good off the back iron. Off the hand of Kelly, and he's able to regroup. And he tries to feed Mafiori. Knocked off the hand of McGowan. Hillers will inbound. I'd say the Hillers are playing their best basketball that they've played all season in the last couple of weeks. And this is the right time to heat up right towards the end of the season when you're trying to make that playoff push. No question about it. And you know, mixing up the starting uh, lineup a little bit. Michael Puvacad starting tonight. That <clears throat> he, he's been coming off the bench a little bit in recent games, so Coach Keen giving a little different look tonight. Well, with the way he's played, he's certainly earned the right to start. No question about it. Pass up top to Puvacad, and now over to Mafiori for three. Off the rim oh, it bad. goes, out of play. Mafiori has the potential to heat up. Uh, he had a game a few, ga a few games ago where he first minute and a half of the second half he had 11 points including three three-pointers he was just lighting it up there so he will keep an eye on that lo lo other hillers have potential to, to do the same terzy and no good from the left side ing comes away with the loose ball kicks it out to mcgowan mafiori with a steal and he has wide open court if he can keep nice. it in <laughs> great hustle unbelievable but that was Certainly uh, out of bounds, I would say. It's like a Tommy point there if you're a Celtics fan. I Absolutely. mean, that's it's like a la Larry Bird or Dave Cowens back in the day. He was flying up the court. Pat Riley will inbound for Westwood. Wolverines coached by Steve St. Martin. Hillers, of course, led by head coach Tom Keene. Two great basketball programs in the TVL. Lori Boko oh, nice. feeds it to Ng and wow. a great block by the hustling Ambersoni. Amber Good recovery Sony with possession, and trying to feed Mafiori and Ng, trying to get a little revenge there. Blocks the pass out of bounds. Wow, a lot of action. Only two buckets, two-two with 5:34 left. Well, these are two quick-moving offenses, and defensively, both both of these teams love to press, and they're great at running the floor. We're going to see a whole lot of hustling tonight. Puvacad, and that one is no good by Puvacad. Therefore, the rebound is Riley. Jack Terzian takes it up, feeds Riley along the wing. Riley trying to work his way inside, gets it back to Terzian. And now two on Terzian as the Hillers switch to 2-3 zone with the double team. No good from oh, the right nice corner job. by Riley there for the loose ball is Puvacad. Here comes Mafiori and it's knocked out of bounds plus a foul. And we're gonna have our first foul for the Wolverines. Looks like Ryan Kester coming in. He's another hiller that can heat up quick. Looks like they got Owen Gaffney with his first. Hillers will have the entry. Ryan Kester on the inbound. And Elon Rosen, a human eraser of the season, has been uh, is in the game for Kelly. He's been a great threat down low when he's on the court. Ooh, that's uh, a block. And that's a nice block there by Westwood. And here comes the Wolverines. Terzian with possession. Terzian gets it over to Riley. Pat Riley hands it off wow, that's to gotta Gowan, be a and there Ooh. is going to be a foul there. Some 
contact was made. You can tell the Hiller, Hillers are fired up here. This is a big game for them. It certainly is. Really can set the tone for the, you know, the rest of the regular season. But uh, so far, 2-2, two two, fourth 43 to go in the first. It's been a defensive struggle, I would say. Yep. Shooting's got a lid in the basket on both ends so far, but that can always change yep. at any given moment. Absolutely. And the foul is on Ryan Kester. That's his first. Pass over to Eng. Good feed to Ori Boko up to the hoop. And it'll roll off the rim there for the rebound is Kester. Here comes the Hillers. Ambrosoni. Oh, too bad. Trying to feed it inside, jumping up and stealing it away is Eng. And now taking it up, Pat Riley feeds it over to Terzian. Now over to Eng in the high post. Kicks it out to McGowan. McGowan nice surrounded move. by defenders. Ori Boko driving it, two defenders in front of him, and he hits the shot anyway, even with the contact. Unbelievable. A lot of contact, no call. I thought that there might have been a call there, but uh, nevertheless, a he heck of a shot. Yeah, it probably should have been an and one. But <laughs> these officials going to let him play a little bit, I think, tonight. Ambersoni surrounded by defenders, and that'll draw up the travel. Westwood basketball. Well, you see both teams uh, they're setting up a lot of double team. Trapping, yeah. Yeah. Great trapping on both sides as Pat Riley inbounds. Jack Terzian takes it up. Terzian trying to find out where to go with it. Westwood having all kinds five, of trouble going seconds. to the interior. Yeah, and Rory Boko in the key too long. Took a little too much time there, having a cup of coffee out there in midcourt. Just wasn't wasn't crossing the line. You don't see that call too often, but that's that's the right call there. Certainly was. Mafiori gets it over to Rosen. And now along the wing is Ooh. Kester. Back to Mafiori. Mafiori, I think, briefly thought about the deep three. Feeds Rosen instead. Rosen drew contact. And that is going to be on McGowan. That's his first. That's a second, or actually. Second, rather. Yeah. That's a team second. That's a big development there. Just one of the starters. Kuvakad will inbound. Well, I'd say uh, foul-wise, it's been a physical game, but these officials letting him play, and you got to expect uh, when these two teams meet up for it to be a physical game. As yeah, he's called for the moving. It's violation. always good when the refs at least try to let let the the game dictate. Uh, let's let the, the kids play, and uh, so far they're doing that. Some good ball distribution Ooh. there, driving to the bucket. Worry Boko up and in he goes. That's his second field goal of the night. Along the right wing, Brian Keefe. Hiller is passing along the perimeter now inside of Kelly. Along the end line, feeds it out to Keefe for three. No good. Rory Boko there for the rebound. Rory Boko with a nice box on Kelly. Pat Riley takes it up for the Wolverines. Drives Ooh, right nice in play. up with the left hand, plus the foul. Pretty sweet move there. Left-handed off the, off the glass. Chance for a three-point play. All of a sudden, 8-2. Westwood, 2.54 to go in the first. A foul called on Brian Keefe. That's his first. Keefe's also had a nice season for the Hillers. He's one of the kind of the uh, the green team coming off the bench, and he uh, brings a lot of energy, and he's certainly capable of the three-point shot as well. Wolverines off to a 9-2 lead. Hillers cannot let this Westwood team take control of the game. Early Tough on. pass. And Kelly is able to pick it up, and then it's stripped away as Kelly bobbled it. Connor Daniele able to rip it away for Westwood. With possession, it's Terzian. Gets it over to the corner to Mickey, Mikey Noon, excuse me. Mikey Noon, certainly a great shooter for Westwood, and he's coming off the bench tonight, but you have to look out for him. He's been a, the high scorer for Westwood in many games. As Pat Riley kicks it back to the corner to Terzian. Now over to Wari Boko. Wari Boko spins around up with the right Ooh. hand, plus the foul. Favor Wari Boko with his third field goal. Well, he's putting on a clinic at the moment. He's got about uh, six or eight points. Uh, six points anyway, plus a chance for another one. And Coach Keen can't be happy with that development 11 to 2. Elon Rosen called with that foul. And the and one is no good. It is a Hiller's rebound. Here comes Amber Sony, and he's going to draw contact. And they got Terzian with his first. 
Four fouls for the Hillers, three for Westwood. The Wolverines do have the 11-2 lead. And Steve, I was doing a Friday's game for radio oh. as this is a steal right here, wide open court, up with oh. the hand, no, he can't finish. And there for the foul. rebound, Povacad, yeah, and you got the frustration foul right after. Oh. Lucked out there, that was a floater pass over to right uh, inbound and it was stolen by number 22, Connor. Daniele and it uh, looked like he was going to go in for a dunk and um, ended up kind of getting a little off track and yeah. missed the shot. And that's why you can't get too fancy with it. Just put the basketball in the hoop. But uh, in the game uh, last Tuesday for the Hillers where they beat Ashland 65-45, they came out pretty slow, I thought. Obviously, they dominated the whole way through. Ashland kind of having a down year, but in that first half, they missed a lot of shots. Yep. And I kept saying throughout the broadcast, if they do that against Westwood, they're not going to come away with this win. Right. Well, they find themselves in a, in a hole early here, you know, only two points in the first quarter, and it's uh, with two minutes left. But things can change in bunches, and it takes, you know, one or two three-pointers. Uh, three, three-pointers can be contagious. We've seen that happen this season with the Hillers, where, you know, a handful of players are, are capable, Matt Fiore, Ambersoni, Kester, Puvacad, um, Brian Keefe, all those guys are capable of getting hot. So uh, we, we're hoping a couple of those guys can do that. Uh, also want to wish uh, Jacob Cohen all the best. He had a pretty tough shoulder injury a couple games ago, and I don't know where he is tonight on the bench, but he's uh, hopefully he's he'll be back. I don't know, but it was a really, really tough injury, but I don't see him tonight so far. Jersey in with the basketball, and we certainly uh, hope he will be back sooner than later. Got the street clothes on. I can see him now. I'd say the Hillers, they're going to have to get the big guys down low. They need to not worry about the outside shots and get some get a low post presence offensively. Riley with the three, Ooh. and he's got it. Really, that, he nailed that one. Pat Riley with six points for Westwood. Coming down, the near side keep over to Kelly. Kelly driving along the end line. Up to Amber Sony. And now over to the wing, up for three is Keefe. That's no good. Batted in the air by Wari Boko, pulled down by Daniele. Here comes Westwood once again. Wolverines building quite the lead here in this first quarter, up 14 to two, a minute 15 and ticking. With possession, Terzian feeds Wari Boko, now over to Riley, up oh. for three and he's got it. Pat Riley red hot from outside the perimeter, 17 to two. Well, we haven't seen anything like this in a long time here in the Athletic Center. Amber Sony with possession. And he's called for the travel. He moved that pivot foot. Wow. Well, a rough start for the Hillers. Still plenty of basketball left, but certainly a rough start. Well, one, one possession at a time, as they say. And they could use a steal and then start with that. But when you, it's tough to compete when with a Pat Riley he's smoking it from the outside, hitting two three-pointers in the last 30 seconds. Uh-oh. Wide open court in front of him. Good pump fake up and in goes Connor Daniele. I think that's a little uh, sweet revenge from that missed open layup earlier. Yeah. Nice ball fake up both hillers in the air. And Ambersoni to Maffiori. Maffiori along the wing, Ambersoni up top. Ambersoni takes it over to the far side, kicks it over to Kester. Kester thought about the three, drives in instead. Now Lind, here comes of, Lind to the bucket. And that was a good drive by McCallum Lynn, making something out of nothing there. Drawing the foul, he's going to the line. Well, a little bit of a shell-shocked uh, feel in the, in the student section. Um, not a lot of noise coming from there that would they typically would do that, but uh, with the score the way it is, like, understandable. First free throw is good. They all count right now, so. They certainly do. 19 to three lead for Westwood. I don't know if I've ever seen a quarter for the Hiller boys where they have less than uh, eight. That's big for for Lind uh, stopping the bleeding for just a minute. 20 seconds left. Hillers could use a little steal here and some some sort of development. Here comes Daniele up for the shot. No good. Pulled down by Kelly. Good rebound there. Let's see if the Hillers can take advantage. Mafiori driving in. Up with the lay, no good. Lind able to pull it down, and now a three, oh, and that is good. Kester. Ryan Kester with the money shot, and boy, did the Hillers need that. And after one quarter of play, it's the Hopkinton Hillers seven, 
The Westwood Wolverines 19. Plenty of basketball left to be played. And I'd say that three at the end by Kessler, that might have been the momentum boost Hopkinton needed. Well, you know, five points in the last, say, 10 seconds or 15 seconds of the quarter gives a little bit of life. You know, 12-point deficit versus, you know, 15 uh, or, or 17, which it was 19-2. to two. So that's uh, a, a, a little bit, a um, little more, uh, give a little more momentum and comfort to know that they have, they're capable of getting a couple baskets and some points in a, in a row. And Westbrook, Westwood showing a little bit, bit of vulnerability there at the end, but you got to tip your hat to them. And uh, Westwood really putting on a clinic there in the first. That's a lot of points and uh, hitting a, a bunch of three-pointers as well. Well, we know the Siller team can put up points very quickly, so I'd say this game far from over. Let's take a look at the TBL boys basketball standings while we have a moment. Westwood at the top with a 13 and two record. Medway 10 and three. Dover Sherborne 11 and four. Bellingham 11 and four. Hopkinton nine and four. Dedham six and eight. Millis three and 13. Allison five and eight. Norton five and nine. Norwood five and seven. Medfield and Ashland two and 12. So quite a competitive TVL as usual for boys basketball. Ryan Kester on the entry. Well, like we said, it's one possession, one possession at a time. You can't. There's no such thing as a 12-point play. So let's just get one, one bucket at a time here. And Sony trying to get it out to oh, Matt nice Fiore, recovery. nearly stolen away, but Matt Fiore able to hustle and get it before noon does. Driving in, Kester kicks it out. Kelly over to Lind, up for three, denied. A great block there by Riley, but he couldn't keep it in bounds, or did he? I gotta say, Westwood swarming defense. I mean, they they don't let up. They're just very active, man-to-man, -man, switching, attacking. Whoever's got the ball, they just go after it. And it's causing some problems for the Hillers. I'd say it's a very similar uh, defense on both sides. Very similar defensive style. Matt Fiore driving, gets it out to Ambersoni. Up for a deep two at the shot clock. Buzzer no good. Kelly almost had the rebound. We have a push call. Oh, and it's going it. to be against the Hillers. It's like Brennan's, Brennan's first. That is the fifth team foul for oh, Hopkinson. Second. And oh, second for Brennan Kelly. Yep. Keep an eye on that one. I'd say the last thing you could do if you're the Hillers is get into foul trouble. Yeah. With possession, that's Mikey Noon working against Matt Fiore. Trying to fire it up top. Good steal there by uh, McCallum Lind. And here comes the Hillers. Matt Fiore on the right of the perimeter over to Amber Sony. Driving in, gets it underneath to Kelly. Kelly, up yeah. off the glass and in. It's a big one. Seven straight points for the Hillers. Cut it to 10. It's Brennan Kelly's second field goal of the night. With possession for Westwood, it's Pat Riley. Hillers were trailing big at one point, but they have nice. worked their way back in. And there's a steal there. Noon was trying to drive in, and Amber Sony said, no, you don't. Kelly over to Lynn, now out to Matt Fiore. Up top to Amber Sony, driving in, stops, nice. pops, drops a shot right in the hoop. All of a sudden, a game of we game have ourselves spurts. A, we have ourselves a game, Steve. <laughs> here comes Pat Riley. Nine straight points. Both teams scoring in bunches here. Riley over to the corner. Wolverines having a little trouble uh, finding that flow they had to start this game. Up for three is Delory. That's no good. Nice box by Brendan. He's got to watch it. He's getting foul here. He's got two. I think there's some players coming in. One of them's for him, I think. It's a lot of time left. Amber Sony along the short Ooh, corner bad. trying to get it up to Lynn. And a little too much mustard on that pass. And that will be Westwood basketball. A little failure fairly to communicate in that one. But a uh, good stretch for the for the Hillers. Surprised Westwood may just letting it ride here. Maybe might not have been a bad time to call a timeout, regroup a little bit. But they've got the ball on the end of the court. It's a 9-0 run for the Hillers. See if they can continue. Oh wow! Great feed over to Ori Boko, who's just waiting in front of the bucket. Goes up and in with ease. He's got about eight points or so. You are. Correct yep. with that. Oh, oh that's got to be contact. And right there. we're going to have a foul here as Matt Fiore drives in. I don't know if it's on the floor. I think it's a on the floor foul. And that is going to be called on Jimmy Bean. Hillers will have the entry. 
Westwood in a 2-3 zo zone. Kuvakai trying to get it out to Maffiori and a little too was, much on that pass. It was, it was tipped. Got tipped there. Pat Riley got the hand on it. Westwood, relentless defense. Hillers uh, maintain their composure, though. Bovacad with possession. Well, I mean, it's a, it's very similar defensive nice, style Mac. on both sides. And Beauty. there's McCow oh, lit off the bad. glass, no good. Oh, yeah, well, he got this. And definitely then Gregatori briefly had it, but Warri Boko says, nope, that basketball's mine. Here comes Jimmy Bean. There was contact. They didn't call that one either, so the refs clearly letting, letting the boys play here. They certainly That's are. It's going to be a travel. No okay. call. Able to get it out to Warri Boko. Westwood coach losing his mind over there. Warri Boko to Riley. Riley working against Povacad. Up for the shot. Good no D. good. Good box. And there for the rebound is Rankatori. Here comes Povacad. Out to Kester. Up for three. Oh, no. That's his shot right there. Yeah, I think uh, you got to get Kester to heat up from outside the perimeter. Riley over to Bean. Ooh, that's almost a travel right there. And there is going to be a contact call, and that is going to be on Jimmy Bean. Kind of cleared him out, a little discarded him with a, a very subtle forearm, but it was a little, little not so subtle. The correction out of those, Jonathan Ng with the oh. contact there. Bean had the basketball in that last sequence. Kester on the entry. That is the sixth foul for the Wolverines, so perhaps the Hillers will get some opportunities from the charity stripe in this first half. Kester along the wing, gets it up to uh, Rankatori. Here we go. Now over to Rosen along the end line, up for the shot, no good, and it's pulled down by McGowan. Ings uh, has a presence underneath there. He's good. Whether he's blocking shots, he's disrupting shots too. Riley for oh three, my. he's got it. That's his third three bucket of the game. I mean, he hasn't even hit the rim on those three that have gone in. 12 points for Pat Riley as the ball knocked out of bounds along the far side off of Wolverine. He's in the zone for sure. They just got to contest every one of those. Westwood leading the Hillers 24 to 11. Four minutes, 11 seconds left in the second quarter. The Hillers towards the end of the first quarter. To start the second quarter, they were scoring some rapid buckets, but Westwood has since slowed them down. Uvacad with possession, takes it inside, kicks it back out, up for three, and no good is Ambrosoni. And we have a foul after the shot. Looks like it's on Westwood, that's good. We get a one-on-one -on -one probably. Brings the student section well, you, a little you, energy there. You need to take advantage of these situations. Drew Rankatori at the line. That foul was called on, I believe it was... Uh, they haven't updated it yet, so we'll let you know. And the end one is, excuse me, the front end of a one and one is good, so Rankatori gets a back end. Well, these free throws are, even though it's only in the second quarter, they're, they're pretty critical right now. And they hit, they're hitting four out of four so far from what I can recall, so keeping them in the game to some degree. Don, still down by 11, but much better than 17. Here comes Ori Boko driving in, feeds in, kicks it out to Riley. Riley up to Ori Boko. Ori Boko thought about the shot, will give it off to Riley instead. Good D by Kuvakad here. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. McGowan with possession, launches the three, air ball. Here comes the air ball chance, Hillers will inbound. <laughs> How gracious, what's the graciousness of the fans here? <laughs> uh, they might want to take a look at the scoreboard and maybe have, but anyway, uh, we get it. That's just the way it goes here. <laughs> Hines and Mafiori. Well, it's always a great atmosphere. Yep. For the Hillers. It's all in good fun. Absolutely. And with Sony with possession and a couple defenders in front of him and There's he threw an elbow. So, Tom Ambersoni will go to the line for a one and one. And that foul was called on Jimmy Bean. That's his second. Front end is no bad. good. With possession, it's Jimmy Bean. Bean working against Ambersoni. Gets it over to Riley. 
Riley oh, trying to go. feed it inside of Ori Boko. Good aggressive defense there by the Hillers. And What's that? did we have a foul? Oh, they call it Am Ambersoni with a foul there. A little push. Yeah, He's first. I, I did. I thought I saw a little contact there. Westwood will inbound. That is the first foul of the game for Ambersoni. On the entry five seconds. Team. That's got to be five. Violation. Nicely done by the Hillers. Good hustle. Low scoring affair, 24-13. Three minutes left in the second quarter. You can hear the crowd uh, getting a little fired up. Could use a, use a bucket or two here. The kinds on the entry for the Hillers. Amber Sony will take it up. Back to Hines, he goes. Amber Sony. Good feed to Kelly, up off the glass, oh, no good. Batted around, Ng is able to knock it towards his teammate McGowan. McGowan feeds it over. And now the shot from up top is no good by Daniele. But there for the loose ball is Pat Riley. Riley over to McGowan. And Mafiori with the steal. I gotta give it to him. Oh. He's trying to pull a move there, but Mafiori says, oh, yeah? And well, that's unfortunate. can't finish. Here comes Westwood. Quick break here. Daniele takes it to the rack off the glass and in. That's an unfortunate swing. Hillers had a two-on-one, just couldn't find the right recipe to get the, get the, a good shot off. And then Westwood, uh, oh, that's got to be a foul. And you are right. That is indeed a foul on Daniele. That's his second. A one-and-one one for the Hillers. And next foul, it'll be a uh, double bonus time. Well, kind of a critical juncture in, in, the, in the game here, Tom, with uh, just over two minutes left in the half. And uh, Hillers had gotten the, the lead down to 10 or 9, and now it's uh, got back up to uh, 12 now. So you want to get it into the single digits before halftime and kind of get things, you know, do one step at a time. But... Well, I've said it all season. This Hillers boys team, they have been uh, pretty slow starting in a lot of their games this year. But when they come out in the second half, they look like a totally different team sometimes. Yep. Elon Rose and two big free throws right there. Rory Boko into Daniele. Over to Riley. Got to stay on that guy. Riley feeds it in to Daniele. Now back out. Three, no good by Terzian. Bat in the air by oh, Ambersoni, and it's pulled down by Ng. Oh. And Ng said, I, but there's a foul. We'll have to see there. Well, we'll have to look at it on HCAM TV with the replay on that one. That looked like a pretty clean block. All ball could have, could have been a little body contact, but the way they've been calling the game tonight, I thought that was a, a heck of a block by, by Lind. First of two for Ng. Got it. Jonathan Ng, three points so far tonight. He's the big man in the low post for the Wolverines. Certainly having a presence defensively tonight. Interesting free throw style. He's about a foot off the, the line and, and not even centered, but whatever works. Ambersoni pulls down the rebound. Kester out to Ambersoni. Now it's back to Kester. Hiller's having trouble finding a, a way to get inside. Hmm. Amber Sony back to Kelly. Kelly drives in and he'll drop. Oh. Or no, he's going to be called for the that's charge. A, that's a tough one. So an offensive foul there. That's Brennan Kelly's third. That's unfortunate. Uh, he, he was a little out of control going up there, and, and I, I think that's the right call. I, I think so as well. Warraboko really had, had his feet set pretty good, and Brendan kind of ran him over. So It'd be good if you're playing football. <laughs> Pat Riley well, with possession. Brendan's quite a football player too. so it certainly is. But he has the potential to uh, do some damage in the second half. I think we've seen the rest of the, his, all, all we're going to see out of him for the first half. Riley Ooh, with there's a good a, there's a Daniele, foul. and that's going to be a push on Povacod. Two shots for, or one and one for Daniele. 
Connor Danielli, four points so far tonight. 109 left to go in the first half, a 12 point lead for Westwood. No good on the oh, front end bad. of the one and one, but a Westwood rebound to Erzian, gets oh. it out to Riley, and Riley finishes. That's His a killer. Fourth three bucket of the game for Pat Riley. Do not let him shoot from outside the perimeter. Jeez. That ball knocked out of bounds off a Wolverine as Kuvakad tried to pass up to Lind. Well, Pat Riley, I mean, we've seen a lot of games here, Tom, this season. He's one of the, he's definitely one of the stronger players that we've seen in any team in the in Tri Valley League this year. I'd have to agree. Here's Kester. Ooh, too bad. No good there. Westwood has it. Pat Riley collects the loose ball. Terzian takes it up. Terzian. Fair defenders in front of him, and that'll drop the steal by Lind. Feeds it over to Puvacot, and now it's back out to Ambrosoni. To Kester. Kester drives Tough in, up shot. with the left handed shot. No good. Therefore, the good rebound is Rosen. Rosen, and he'll draw a foul. Elon Rosen, he can do that all night long and go to the line, and that, that's a two shot foul, I think. Double bonus, but. It indeed is. And Elon hit two other free throws a minute ago, so hopefully he can. Keep the mojo going at the line. Ron Rosen, two points so far tonight, make it three. He's had some games coming off the bench and uh, multiple block shots. One game he had at least a half dozen of them. Oh, there you go. That's big. Those are big. Those are big hoops. Keep keeping keeping the dreams alive here. I'm about dreams, but they they need a they need a stop. Stop the bleeding right now and get a turnover, get one more bucket if they can somehow. That would be great. Well, I'm sure there will be some adjustments made in the halftime locker room. Ng with possession. Up top now to Daniele. Probably working for one last shot. Daniele. Here it is. Turn it around and it's knocked out of his hands. Huge. Stolen away by Lynn. A big steal there. Beauty. Great feed over to Rose and <laughs> to the bucket. <laughs> and the crowd's back into it. You might be down by 11, but that is quite the way to end the first half and Steve I would say that is a momentum boost if I ever saw one well I mean it's been a game of streaks both both teams scoring in bunches and and uh, in each case the end of the first quarter and end of the second quarter Hillers with a huge play a lot of energy and um, they you know instead of being down 17 they're down 11 so everything's manageable no problem they as you said earlier they come back historically they come out of the second half and uh, can lay it on them so we'll see how that goes well, it should certainly be a very interesting second half for sure. At the halftime break, it's Westwood 30, the Hillers 19. We're going to take a timeout. Second half coming up next on HCAM.
to the Hopkinton High School Athletic Center. Tom Nappy alongside Steve Spector. Happy to be here bringing you Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Basketball on HCAM. And as we enter the second half, the Hillers are trailing by 11, 30 to 19. Let's go over the scoring totals for the first half. We'll start off with Hopkinton. Uh, Tommy Ambrosoni, two points. Ryan Kester, three. Drew Rankatori, two. Brendan Kelly, four. McCallum Lynn, two. And the team leader for the Hillers, Elon Rosen, with six. For the Westwood Wolverines, Connor Daniele with four. Jonathan Ng with three. Favor Wari Boko with eight. And the team leader is Pat Riley, 15 points for the Wolverines. And we got a great crowd on hand here tonight, Steve. So let's hope the Hillers can have a nice comeback in the second half. Well, they, they certainly finished the first half with a lot of momentum with a steal with about six seconds left and got a huge bucket uh, layup right in front of the student section. So they, they left, they couldn't have had any more momentum going into the half despite the score. So, you know, after being down 19 to two, they've kind of closed things up and are down by 11 and here we go. Pat Riley set for the entry. Going over to Wari Boko, Ooh, nearly stolen away, but Wari Boko able to get to it. And then as Daniele tries to drive in, travel call. That's a pretty good start, a little turnover. Uvacad will have the entry. Well, the Hillers looked, uh, I'd say, a whole lot better in the second quarter offensively than they did in that first quarter. And they typically are able to make Ooh, that's a foul. Halftime adjustments as Ambersoni drives in. We got a foul called. Lori Boko. And that is his second. Hillers will have the inbound. Gets it out to Mafiori. Now back over to Povacad in the Kelly. Back out to Mafiori, up for three. Oh. No good off the rim. <laughs> and then Lind, I think, was trying to dunk it there. Put back, Ambrosoni, yes. Plus a foul. I think Lind got his hand caught in the net. Yeah. But certainly, you know, I think just to see that kind of energy, they crash on the boards. That's a, the old high school coach in Framingham when I went to school. just crashed the boards, and that's what they did. That three hillers going to the, to the hoop after that missed shot. And Ambrosoni ended up with and got fouled. It's the first one. Free throws will be key, I think, for the Hillers. Second free throw. Ooh, friendly yes. bounce. 30 to 21. Plenty of time. Pat Riley on the entry. Over to McGowan. McGowan working against Mafiori. Mafiori playing defense with his feet. That's the way to do it. Riley with possession along the far side. Good feet of Wari Boko. Now it's over to Daniele underneath. Kicks it out to Noon. Up for three, no good. Loose ball collected by Ambersoni. Ambersoni takes it to the rack. <laughs> up with the left hand, in he goes. Coast to coast, Ambersoni. What a bucket. Almost a foul on the, oh. <clears throat> too bad. Yeah, they got Matt Fiore with some contact there. Not a catastrophe. That's his first, I think. Yep. <clears throat> James McGowan had possession during the foul. Mikey Noon on the entry. The D by the Hillers. There it is. Great steal by Lind. Able to pick it off right in front of Ori Boko. Pass up by Povacod. Ooh, almost a double dribble. Mafiori over to Lind. Ambersoni. Nice Ambersoni move. Oh, there's a kick. Look at that kick Kelly. ball. No call. Too many defenders around. Daniele comes over to steal. Kelly trying to get it back. Pass over to Wari Boko. Ambersoni gets a hand in there. And here comes Kelly up the far sideline. And we have a whistle. I think he stepped out of bounds. Well, you can just feel the energy in the building here. Coach Keen really happy with the effort, even despite that turnover. But that's just out of hustle. You know, uh, a little bit of chaotic situation. Both teams scrambling a bit. Uh, right now, Hiller's... Uh, Four, four zip in the third quarter and showing some good momentum. They certainly are. McGowan yeah. and coming down court and uh, was that backcourt? It was uh, James McGowan oh, elbow. pushed him off kind of right in front of the ref, kind of discarded him with the left arm as he was driven with his right. And that is his, his third. third. That's yep. a big development right there. It certainly is. 
And we'll have a timeout. The momentum is swinging towards the Hillers. It's a seven point lead for the Wolverines. And Steve, I mentioned that the Hillers, they've started off a lot of games slow, but in the second half they come out firing in all cylinders. And that seems to be what's happening right now. Well, I think we got them right where we want them here, Tom. You know, I, even down seven, there's there's a ton of momentum that you can you can feel the energy in the student section, kind of emulating through the building here. And I'm not sure who called that timeout, but um, the Hillers certainly have the mo mojo going right now and plenty of time. So it's not over yet or anything, but we, we, it's nice to have a competitive game here after being down 19 to two. It certainly is. They went on a. Uh 9-0 run after they were trailing 19-2 and got right back in the game. Got more fans coming in the athletic center here and the Hillers taking an extended timeout. They do that occasionally. It's home court after all, you know. Yeah, that's right. Well, the, uh, the aggressive defensive approach by the Hillers is continuing and it's working. It's drawing up some big turnovers. Pubacot on the inbound. Brendan Kelly with three fouls, as does James McGowan for Westwood. We'll keep an eye on that. Pubacot over to Ambersoni. Ambersoni along the wing, driving in. Gets it out to the corner over to Pubacot. Up for three, yes! Wow. Looks like a foul on Pubacot. We had a foul for the inbound. I think they got Puvacad there. Well, if you're the Hillers, you don't want unnecessary fouls. You don't want to give Westwood any opportunities to get to the line. On the entry is Bean. Here comes Pat Riley. Pat Riley, 15 points in the first half. The Wolverines have yet to score in the second half. Bean, top of the perimeter, over to Wari Boko. Good D. Boko spins there it around, is. miscommunication, Hiller's ball. Ooh, that's a tough bounce for the ref to go underneath the stands, but we'll take it. And heck of a D, got a, you know, Mike Puv Michael Puvacad, two fouls this half, uh, but he's playing some tough D on Pat Riley, who's gotten shot out, I think, this half. So that last possession, Puvacad all over him, gave him no room. Brennan Kelly along the wing. Ooh. That's a travel, too bad. Beats it over to Lynn, but travel called. I'd say having the speed of Ambersoni and Puvacot on the court at the same time can be deadly for Hiller opponents. Yep, they get the stop and stutter moves going on, creating space for themselves. And Westwood ball coming the other way. Four point deficit. Yep, Hiller's on a 7-0 run. Terzian will take it up. Jersey and trying to figure out where to go with it. Ooh, that's a, almost a travel. Ng with possession, kicks it back out to Terzian. Up for the jumper, no good. good. good McCallum Lynn there for the rebound. Puvacad takes it up over to Amber Sony. Oh, Amber man, Sony too bad. with a miscommunication. He was looking for Lind. I think. Uh, both of these defenses are so overwhelming sometimes that that's why you're seeing these miscommunications. It, I mean, it's just both teams two hustling defense. Yeah, they're just, both teams jacked up on defense, and it's really disruptive. Pat yeah. Riley able to get to it off the errant pass from Ng. Riley stops, pops, drops a three <laughs> right in. <laughs> Look I mean, out! Puvacad all over him, and just you know, Riley created just enough space. 18 points for Riley, and Kelly's going to draw a foul. He's tripped up. 18 out of 32 points for Riley. 32 total for the Westwood Wolverines. And a foul called on Ng. That's his second. Povacata on the entry. Over to Kester. Gets it back to Povacata. Kubikad oh, takes there you it go. in a and kick. gets it over to Rosen, but a kick ball there. Hiller's inbound. Over to Matt Fiore. Nice play. Deep two. Ooh, in and out. Oh, good. 
Loose ball, Rosen trying to there collect, you go. and he swipes it off of McGowan to keep it in Hiller's possession. Great hustle there by Rosen. Hiller hustle play right there. Ro he's been doing that stuff all year, Tom, you know? The little thing, you don't see that in the score, sh score sheet, but everybody's doing their parts, and oh, too bad. Bubakot over through Rosen there, but Lynn comes up with it. <laughs> Reverse, no oh, good. Too bad. Ng is there for the rebound. Here comes Ori Boko to the bucket off the glass. No good. And Pubakad there to collect. Cut a break there. Back and forth we go. What a play by Wiley. Get it here as Pat Riley able to keep it in bounds. Jack Terzian, the pass over to Ori Boko. Now back to Terzian. Terzian up against McCallum Lind. Up to Riley now. Riley will drop the shot, and it'll fall out Oof. into the hands of Lynn. Thank goodness. I gotta, he's got to cool that guy off. It's the first miss in a long time. Fiore over to Pubacad. <laughs> Pubacad up to Kester. Now Rosen feeds Pubacad, driving in, denied by Ng, but therefore the loose ball is Rosen. Nice recovery. Need to, need to get a shot off here. Five left on the shot clock. There goes Pubacad, oh, and bad. it's an air ball. Good defense by Westwood in that possession. Pat Riley will inbound. I mean, Back Hillers. In the game for the Hillers, Ambersoni and Rankatori. Excuse me, Tom. I was going to say, 3.22 left in the third quarter. Westwood only two points this quarter. I, I don't want to speak too soon, but... That could change. Certainly could. Well, right now, all the momentum has shifted towards the Hillers pretty much. There it is. And there's a miscommunication there, but catching before <laughs> backcourt is Ori Boko. Good hustle there to get it to McGowan, and now with possession, Terzian. Terzian gets it out to Ori Boko, deep two. No good. Nice box. Brennan Kelly there for the rebound. Westwood just having all kinds of problems shooting-wise. Esther trying to get it up top to Amber Sony, and it's taken away. Here comes the Wolverines. Wide open break here. Riley up for the land. And we're going to have a foul. I think they caught a break down on that, Tom. They Ooh, that should have been a foul. <laughs> well, it's a foul, but it's not a shooting foul. That could have been a sh I thought it was a shooting foul, but they give him to him under underneath. <laughs> and almost a... They get Kester with his second. Number 14 for Westwood, James McGowan, one of the starters. Came very close to getting his fourth foul at the other end of the court, but they look refs letting the boys play, as they say. Riley up to Terzian. Now along the wing McGowan, now into Ng. Around the horn they go. Terzian. Gets it back out to McGowan. Westwood having trouble it's getting in the interior. Travel falls. Hitler's dropping into a zone, but a really aggressive zone, moving around a lot of... Just Good. moving... In, to the ball and, and not giving uh, an inch to Westwood. Two points so far in the third quarter for Westwood, and we only have two minutes, 28 seconds left to go. This Hiller defense is giving Westwood fits. The Hillers, they have uh, seven points in this third quarter, but they trail by six. Ambersoni driving in, gets it over to the corner. Along the corner, that's key. Ooh, almost a travel. Back out now to Rankatori. Rankatori to Kelly. Kelly drives in, feeds the corner, key for three, no good, it falls short. Loose ball oh, off bad. the hand of Rankatori, out of bounds it goes. We've seen Keith get hot from three-point land. He was a little short on that one, but two minutes uh, to go in the third quarter here. Terzian will take it up for Westwood. McGowan feeds in. Kicks it out over to Terzian. There's a travel, too. Kind of a questionable one there. The refs are... The, I mean, of, of all the types of travels, Tom, that we see it, in this league, that's that happens all the time. That's the most common one. Right. It's a travel-friendly uh, officiating, I would say. <laughs> Pubacot on the entry. Ambersoni will take it up. Ambersoni back to Pubacot. Oh, nice. Great feed of Rosen <laughs> off the glass and in. <laughs> How about that? Elon Rosen having the game of his life tonight. Junior center. And one for Elon Rosen, who now has eight points on the night.
Back to a four-point lead for Westwood. There it is. Oh, nope. I thought I was going to get a hometown bounce there. Or Boko to McGowan. Behind the back there as Matt Fiore nearly had the steal. Driving in out to the corner to Terzian. Terzian out to Ori Boko into Ng. Look out. Off the oh. glass. In plus the foul. That's a big development. That's the fourth one on Brendan, unfortunately, with minute 24 to go. That's uh, unfortunate development for the Hillers. Now, well, Brendan Kelly, I think, is going to come out of this game. In fact, he'll come out right now. Ryan Kester is in. Jonathan Ng, five points tonight for Westwood. A chance to complete an and one here. Count it. That's a big development. They had it down to three. Hillers down by a touchdown. Puvacot on the entry. Ambersoni working up the far side. Driving in, yes. up with the underhand, yes! Wow! <laughs> what a play. Ambersoni, right-handed layup. He's a lefty player, but... It's that back-to-back-to-back to back to back and one. Split the seam and <laughs> figure out a way to get it off the glass and in. Well, I like the Hillers' approach here. Drive inside. They took too many outside shots, I felt, in the first half. They need to drive inside and make it happen. And yeah, next, that's a big one. Right. Next, next foul up will be the seventh for Westwood. So the Hillers are from here on in are in the in the bonus. Seven points in this third quarter for Amber Sony. Nine overall. Pass to a wide open Daniele, and he hits for the deep two there. Look out, Amber Sony. Over to Kester, up for three. No, off the iron it goes. Therefore the rebound, Riley. Okay, let's need a stop here. Terzi in with possession. It's Terzi in up against Amber Sony. Good D. It's back out over to the wing, driving in, Daniele. Now back That's to Terzi in, and there is the moving violation. Hiller's great D there, just make it, they're making the commitment on the D. Kovacot on the entry. Hiller's could probably work for one shot here. Amber Sony. Good feed to win, the pump oh, fake and the block. Ori Bogo just able to get a hand in there. Hillers keep it, oh, Ambersoni. That's Looking unfortunate. Looking for Rosa, knocked out. Mac Lind had an opportunity. I think he was anticipating someone, uh, one of the Westwood players blocking his shot, and he, he just should have taken it up there, but it's easy, easy to say from here. Hillers need a stop. They certainly do. Terzian with possession. Six seconds of counting left in the third quarter. Good feet underneath, Terzian. Oh no. Wide open shot, no good by Daniele. Ooh. And that is how the third quarter will end. Only seven points in that third quarter for Westwood. The Hillers are able to strike for 12. And they pull within six, heading into the final frame. Quite impressive uh, third quarter, I'd say. Let's send it down to the uh, court floor right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen. For three, five, one, zero, zero, six, zero. Get your cash number three, fifty, one, zero, zero, six, zero. Thank you. And uh, Tom, I was going to say. You could see the, the, the type of defensive commitment that the Hillers have made. The, the first quarter, you know, that, that's history. They give up 19 points in the, in the first quarter, but since then they've given up 18 points in two quarters. So they've really shut Westwood down largely and uh, have crept back into the game in a six-point game. And we're in a good spot to uh, plenty of time to, you know, assuming we can contain Pat Riley here, who's been light, lights out. 
Uh, and as, assuming, depending on how they manage Brendan Kelly with four fouls, and he is on the bench to start this quarter. But they, Elon Rosen picking up the slack uh, with about eight or ten, eight points and a whole lot of, a lot of energy. Well, we'll see what the Hillers do here in this final frame. Ambersoni with possession. Ooh, Driving a, in, the fadeaway, no. Ori Boko there to collect. Here comes McGowan. McGowan trying to get it over, and a great oh, catch there, there by Daniele, denied. Rosen with the block, Lynn there to collect. That gets the student section fired up. Ambersoni with possession. I think Rosen has his own, his own fan section. Oh, that's too bad right there. Stolen back. Ori Boko, wide open court. And Lynn gets a hand in there. That's going to be a foul with some contact. Crowd doesn't like it, but I definitely uh, saw a little bit of contact there. And well, they that was favor Ori Boko to the line. Unfortunate. A little bit of a mental error on the other end of the court. And... Uh, Rory Boko took advantage of it, stole the ball, and Lind, Lind made a heck of a play to, to block the shot, but he did draw some contact there. First free throw, no good. Free throws are going to be crucial for both teams in this final quarter. Second free throw, no, and there to collect is Povacod. Big break right there. Oh, man. And Maffiori misfires. Backcourt it goes. There's the whistle. Westwood ball. Both teams a little scatter at the moment, but Hiller's a couple turnovers to start this fourth quarter. Uncharacteristic of them. And not a, not a bad timeout by Coach Keene to kind of get the boys settled down a little bit because they're not taking advantage of the situation being down six. Yeah, I think that's a good timeout. Get your uh, team back concentrating there's been a couple of miscommunications so they uh, certainly need to figure some things out well we have a moment I think uh, how about some Patriots uh, predictions what's gonna happen in Super Bowl mm. 53 Steve oh boy I mean I don't know if, I don't know if you're asking the right guy because I uh, well I, I certainly follow them and we're it, it's been quite a disruption for the last two weeks in, in, a, in a fun sense and then you know the reality is we're all going to get back to our regular lives as soon as Sunday's over, and, and, and hopefully we'll have a, a parade and the duck boats will be warming up by, by now. But prediction, um, I would say 34-28. Wow. Uh, okay. Pats. Uh, let me clarify like that. It. They've got the momentum going, uh, and um, I think the, you know, the advantage of uh, experience over youth, I think, is, is real. So. That's my that's my uh, prediction. What about you? I'm going to say Patriots 37-24. I think it'll be a Ooh. nice, comfortable win. It probably won't, but that's what I'm hoping for. We'll take that. Either one of those will work. <laughs> Absolutely. Terzian at the top of the perimeter. Over to Riley. Back to Terzian. Long three. No. Off the front of the rim it goes. Collected by Maffiori. Hiller, Hiller student section, sixth man at the moment, trying to create as much havoc as they can. Dangerous Lin pass. Linda Maffiori up to Ambersoni. Shot clock at around yep. 10 right now. Good Running defense. out of time. They got to find a way to get into the interior. Ambersoni with the jumper denied. Getting a hand on it there was Pat Riley. Knocked out of the possession of Riley. Loose ball. Great Amber hustle. Sony with great hustle once again. Maffiori getting wrapped up with Riley for the jump ball call. Great job. The Hillers just laying it out there, man. Amber Sony ran out of ran the shot clock down on the other end of the court. And Pat Riley playing some really tough D on him and blocked his shot and then tried to get him back and did. He poked the ball out of the way and created a turnover, almost a turnover, but a jump ball helps. They need to change, they just change the possession. So next next jump ball will go to the Hillers, which could come into play. Riley with possession. You certainly don't want to give him an opportunity to shoot a three. Over to Ori Bogo, nearly stolen away. And now it's stolen away. Lind with the good hustle. Takes it to the rack, up oh, with the right hand, bad. no good. And it's pulled down by Riley. Feeds Terzian. Terzian to Ng. Ng to oh, the hoop. Tough, tough exchange right there. Lind a little out of control going to the hoop, but you can see. Oh, 
Kessler called for a travel. I didn't see that one. I didn't see it either. That's that's too bad. Got to bring Brendan in here with a. Well, with all the travel calls in this game, I guess these two teams have traveled a whole lot of miles. That's true. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Pat Riley on the entry. We're here all week. <laughs> <laughs> 5.52 left to go. It's an eight-point lead for Westwood. Critical juncture. I get the rest of the rest of the game is critical, but right now the, the Hillers need to stop. No points as of right now in the fourth quarter for the Hillers. Around the perimeter goes Westwood. Terzian with the long two. Yes. Ooh, that's a tough one. All of a sudden back to 10 points. Need a, need a run. Kelly trying to find Matt Fiore. He drew a foul. That'll be a one on one situation. Ouch. Brendan shaking it off. Kind of well, got tripped up a little bit there. And that one is on Ng. That's his fourth. So that's something to pay attention to. Brendan Kelly, four points so far tonight. Two field goals back in the first quarter. First time at the line. One and one. Front end, no good, and it's collected by Riley. Here come the Wolverines, Terzian. Westwood's done a good job shutting down Brendan tonight. I don't see that too often. Terzian oh, man, takes him with bucket, he'll draw a foul. <laughs> That's going to be called on Amber Sony. I guess you'd have to call that one, but number four, Jack Terzian kind of leaned back and created the contact, but Amber Sony wasn't set. Sambersoni's second foul. Two shots here for Jack Terzian. Terzian remains at two points for the night as he misses the first. The Hillers uh, student section getting under the skin of uh, Terzian. And it works. That's the second time they've done that tonight. Save four points, I guess you could say. <laughs> right. It's the sixth man, Kelly oh, with a great one. Peter Angatori plus a foul. <laughs> Free throw's critical. Works both ways. Miss him on the one end and we hit him down here. That'll, that'll work. That one called on Daniele. That was his third. Got to say, overall, I don't know what your stats say, but the Hillers have got to... But they've done a good job overall at the line tonight. I would have to agree. We'll try to get you the uh, exact number. Uh, I don't know if you can do that while calling the game. That'd be a miracle. <laughs> Probably <but> can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I, if I had to guess, I'd say they hit about 80% of them tonight. They've hit most of them. Yeah. Terzian for three. Oh, got it. Oh, man. That, was a, that ball came down wet. It was brought, brought rain. That was a big arch on that one. Ooh, Ambrose, dangerous pass. Ambersoni with possession. Kelly, yes. Right back at you. Nine points. 450 left. Ooh. Terzian takes it up. Good speed on Terzian. He's quick. And he's starting to feel it from the field as well. Pat Riley with possession. Brendan's going to watch his fouls there. Terzian. Shot clock at 10. Daniele. Out to Oriboko. Oriboko up with the left hand. Good. Pops it off the glass and in. That was good no call by the ref. Definitely some contact and uh, let, letting them play there. Amber that would have been Sony. Brendan's fifth. Oh, Matt there we go. Fiori thought about the three. Mm. And they're going to say Amber Sony stepped out. That's a tough one right there. He did look uh, like he was a little bit far past that baseline. Kelly very fortunate. There was a whole lot of contact on there, but uh, on the other end. And... Um, where Boko created most of it, but uh, anyway, Brendan's still in the game, and he's, you know, we find ourselves, uh, what was a six-point deficit is now 11, so again, critical situation here with 4-12 left in the fourth quarter, and uh, Hiller's on a four-game winning streak, Westwood on a two-game winning streak. We see the seniors, uh, or I'm sorry, we have the student section with the cardboard cutout section. That takes a lot of effort to do that, and you can see the students are uh, have added a whole lot of energy to the 
to the game tonight. We appreciate that. I got the stat you were looking for there. Okay. 13 for 16 from wow. the strike. That's pretty good. I would say that's in high school. That's about as, that's as good as you're going to get in high school. That's a good night at the line. That's yep. for sure. And that's big in this game especially. But it comes uh, at a time the Hillers have been kind of struggling from the line a little bit in their last few games. But this is a night where you really need to hit those free throws. And you're going to be in the bonus for the rest of the game. So drop some fouls and get to the line. Pat Riley on the entry for Westwood. Full court. Oh, too they bad. Foul on the Hillers. They get Matt Fiore with contact. That's his third or fourth. I believe it's his second. Oh, second. Yeah. I, see I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> and that puts them on the line one and one. <clears throat> James McGowan, no points so far tonight. He's going to try to change that right now. Both teams in a bonus the rest of the way. Well, it's been a uh, physical second half. McGowan does hit the first. Westwood up by 12, 4-12 left to go. Second of two, got it. He's a nice player, James McGowan. Ambersoni on the entry. Gets it over to Rankatori. Well, we need a three-point barrage here, a couple in a row to get the momentum going here. Rankatori feeds Kelly. Kelly to Kester, up for three. No, air ball. Kelly had it in his hands briefly, then it fell out. McGowan comes away with the loose ball. Here comes Pat Riley. Riley. Being watched by Kester. Good feed of Daniele, Ooh, up and play. in. That hurts, 15 point deficit right now. Connor Daniele, eight points for Westwood. Mafiori to Kester, went off of Kester, loose ball collected by Rancatori. Caught a break there. Ambersoni driving oh, in. Oh, a lot of, lot of contact. No. Nope. I'm shocked it wasn't a foul called there. Me too. I mean, I understand letting him play, but there was a lot of contact yeah. there. And I don't know why the officials lined up where he is. Anyway, he should be right behind the play. Yep, they have three officials here tonight, maybe getting ready for the playoffs. So <clears throat> some of the games uh, mostly have been two. I think, they, I think they, they upped it to three during the playoffs, so this might be a, in preparation of that. Well, I think we got two officials and a travel agent. <laughs> <right there. laughs> 326 left to go in regulation. <laughs> a 50 to 35 lead for Westwood. Yeah, I mean, I'd say overall the officiating has been okay, but there's certainly been a couple of instances like that where there was a whole lot of contact that just wasn't called. And I don't think it's one team being favored over the other. I think it's happened on both sides. But I understand letting them play, but sometimes where there's all kinds of contact like that, you've got to call it. Yeah, on that particular one, especially, and, and you know, you, you – you don't want to have the game dictate if a foul is called, if it's the two identical plays and it's a tight game or a blowout, you, is it a foul or not? But in that particular case, when the team is behind and there's some obvious contact that we just saw, uh, I think you should call a foul in that, that situation there. But, but overall... But what uh, do we know? <laughs> yeah, we just, we just call the game, we call them as we see them, and we, we, we lean towards the Hiller side every once in a while. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amber Sony. Out to Matt Fiore, thought about the three. Rissoni's going to take it in. Up and no good, but we Oof. have a foul. Body's flying everywhere. That's uh, That is going to be against the Wolverines, so that is going to put Ambersoni at the line. I believe it's a one and one. They got Ori Boko with that one, I believe. Actually, it wasn't Worry Bucko. He's not out there right now. They haven't changed the number on the scoreboard yet. In any case, Ambersoni yeah, hits oh, the first. He's out there, number 10, yep. Oh, there he is. All right. We'll go with Worry Bucko. <laughs> Second free throw, count it. All right, well, Hiller's got to need a stop, need a steal. Worry Bucko with possession. Over to Terzian. Ooh, almost Matt a foul. Fiore with a little bit of a reach in there. Oh, he stepped on. And, and he put it off of Kelly. And out of bounds it went. Timeout so was called. And I think the Westwood coach got the timeout call in 
before he was out of bounds. Did you see him step on the line from here? I did. I, he I, was out of bounds, but I think that's what the official across was saying, that the timeout was called before he stepped out. It was a split second. I want to see the replay of that one because I think that was pretty tight, but we'll, we'll have to go we back gotta, and we gotta look at We've got to get that replay <laughs> system up and going. Uh, well, let's 12 point deficit, I'm sorry, 13 point deficit, three minutes or so left in the game. And um, not to digress, but I have a dinner date with my wife at 8 o'clock, and I already told her I'm going to be late, so I hope she'll understand. I'm sure she will. Yep. I mean, it's still her's basketball. I gave her the heads up, and <laughs> she knows I love doing this, so. Thanks, Don, if you're listening. I don't know if you are, but. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Hillers' upcoming schedule. They'll be back at home next Tuesday night against Norton, and they're on the road for a couple. Next Friday, they're at Dover Sherborne. Tuesday the 12th, they're at Medfield, and then they're at home for the remainder of the season. Wednesday the 13th versus Grafton, Friday the 15th versus Norwood, and Tuesday the 19th versus Wayland. So a lot of home games coming up for the Hillers. They need one more win to clinch a postseason spot. Of course, you want to try to get more than that to get home court advantage for Good a game deep. or two. Stolen away by Amber Sony, but what the? he stepped out, says the official. That is a crazy call. I'm sorry. He wasn't even near the sideline. I don't... He was in the middle of the court. They called him out of bounds. I'm sorry. That's that's crazy. I don't want to overstate that, it. Look at Coach Keene. He can't believe it either. I'm with you, Coach. Yeah, that's one I think we could use the uh, replay system yeah. for. I, I, I don't think he was out at all. Riley feeds it up. Daniele up for the jumper. No good. Pulls down his own rebound. Gets it out to Terzian. Terzian. Hill is swarming. by Ambersoni. They're looking for the turnovers. Riley for three. It'll oh. rattle out. Batted in the air by Amber Sony. Out of bounds it goes. They call it out off of the Hillers. Frustration. All right, now I'm wondering if the fix is in. <laughs> well, it's just good to see Pat Riley. He's a nice player. I don't want to root against the kid, but it's good to see him miss a three-pointer. It's like the first or second miss out of about six of them. Terzian. Over to Riley. Daniele, back out to Terzian. Westwood having all kinds of trouble with this aggressive Hillers defense. Good. And Daniele's blocked by Lynn. What a great block there. And Brennan Kelly comes away with the loose ball. Gets it up to Maffiori. Maffiori goes behind Amber Sony. Oh, that's got to be a foul. Up and in I, I with mean, the contact and everything. And you're right. I don't know what these officials are looking at out there. That, that should have been an and one all the way. I mean, it could have been a foul before he even shot. It was after the shot, so <laughs> it'd be an, it would be an and one. Denise, our camera well, now person who's keeping us all under control. For, not really, but <laughs> she's trying. <laughs> foul called on the Hillers. Yeah, it's one thing to make a mistake or two, but things has been a lot of mistakes yeah. officiating-wise tonight, I must say. There's a big break there, 11 points, two minutes left. They could use a, use a bucket. They're going to need a bucket if they want to get back in it here. They certainly will. Lynn drives in. Yes. Up for the shot. Count it. Big time bucket by McCallum Lind. The lead for Westwood is down to nine. Oh, too bad. Ng gets it back over to Terzian. Terzian working against Mafiori and Lind. As Hiller is continuing with that aggressive zone defense. McGowan up to Terzian. Terzian. Oh, Here it is. Gowan, and it's stolen away. Lind comes away with it. Puvakad now. And Puvakad is going to draw the foul. Number four, Jack Terzian. Can't believe he got a foul on that. Kind of bailed wow. out. It's about time they Puvakad. You know, Michael, he's having a great game. I mean, given the situation at hand, he just threw himself into Terzian, drew the foul, and uh, it was the right call, clearly. It's a fourth foul of the game for Terzian and on the first free throw Pavakad is good. Pavakad on the second. Five points for Michael Pavakad. Oh man. What? They, they, they wave it off? They did some violation or something. Somebody came in uh, way too soon. You never, you never see that. I guess they're saying a Hiller jumped. Ooh, that's a travel right there. I'm sorry. And there it is. There's your travel call. I just want to let you know about that one, too. <laughs> Uvacad on the entry. 
eight point lead for Westwood. Need a bucket. Ambersoni nearly lost it. We have a whistle. Yeah, these are double bonus right here, so. He's going to the line. Hiller's going uh, going really going well at the line tonight, so we can we can deal with this. My wife Donna can wait for the dinner if, we, if they can pull this thing out. She'll understand. <laughs> James McGowan with his fourth foul. First of two, mm. no. Got to hit those. Second free bad. throw, no good. Pat Riley pulls it down. Terzian. Pass up to Riley. Now Ng. Ng turns it around. Westwood just trying to waste clock right now. I think it's about uh, foul time if you're the Hillers, and there it is. They filed the right guy, though, I think, if they caught, fouled Ng. I believe it was Wari Boko. Oh, Wari Boko, there we go. Well, that's okay, too. He hasn't had a particularly good night at the line, either, but... That fouls on Brendan Kelly. He has five, so he's going to take a seat. That's a good game by Brendan. Uh, not one of his best games. He's, you know, they, I, to, to Westwood's credit, they, they've really kind of kept him in check most of the night tonight. And um, he still did his thing, but not to the degree he has in other games. Front end of a one and one is no good. Therefore, the rebound is Ambrosoni. Ambrosoni kicks it over to Kester. Kester to Povacad. And now Lind for three. No, off the front of the rim it goes. Ng with the rebound. Killers need a foul here. There it is. Jump ball. Wow. That's okay. a big break. That's even better. Terzian got wrapped up with Povacad, and I think the, uh, the Hillers got a little favor that time. I, I think so. Contact. I think so. I'm, I'm with you there. You gotta call him, call him as we see him, and it doesn't always go. Yeah, Our way, but that one did. It certainly did. Ambersoni oh, with the underhand, no. That might do it there. And it was pulled down by Wari Boko. Here comes Westwood. Pass down to Ng. Wide open court in front of him, but he's going to hold on to it, waste the clock, and wait for the foul. That one's going to be on Puvakad. That's his third. So double bonus here. So 27 seconds left. We kind of need a miracle here, Tom. If this doesn't pan out for him, you got to give Hillers credit. They were down by a bunch early, and they fought their way back, got it down to about six points. Yeah, it was quite the comeback. Lost their mojo. I'm not saying it's over quite yet. I don't, I don't know how they'll, they'll, if they keep on missing foul shots and the Hillers can get a bucket or two, you never know. Second free throw for Ng. That unusual stance. He's put a stage right on his stance. And he's got it. Hillers need to work quickly. Matt Fiore. I think he threw that off of McGowan intentionally. Trying to get it over to Ambersoni, stolen away. That might do it. And that, I think, probably will do it. See if the Hillers even foul here. I don't think they're going to. McGowan out to Oriboko, and that is going to do it. They're going to waste the clock, and the Westwood Wolverines are going to walk away with the 51-42 victory over the Hillers. Well, it was a game that the Hillers, they were down big early on. They fought their way back. And I think it was a good effort tonight by the Hillers against a very good Westwood team. Yeah, it, it kind of, you know, they need to, it was a good kind of reality check, uh, gut check for the Hillers tonight. They showed their, they showed their uh, Hiller pride. They came back. They didn't, they didn't after being down 19-2, they came back and got, got close but couldn't get it over the hump. Nevertheless, congratulations to both teams on a great effort and a fun night here at the uh, Athletic Center. Well, the Hillers uh, fall to Westwood 51 to 42. Hopkinton now 9 and 5 on the season. Westwood is now 14 and 2. For our crew this evening, Bob Hamilton, Mary Arnott, John Ritz, Andy Ritz, Denise Antaki, and Jane Ritz. My broadcast partner, Steve Spector. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Basketball on HCAM. Enjoy the rest of your night and go Patriots!